Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-79. If you were listening last time, you may remember that the party trusted the coffer box enough to put most of their liquid wealth in it. Each member was given 50 gold pieces as spending money, and an additional 300 gold pieces was kept out for party needs. The group also was able to find lodging at the Crossed Swords Inn. Karina turned over the mounts and peepers to the care of a shy stable boy named Eddie. Although he was initially scared of the axe beak, the pair soon became close friends. The waif noticed that her actions were being observed by the watch commander of Tunis named Tressa Norink. We rejoin the party as they are in their respective rooms getting cleaned up from the ride into town. Ah, that feels wonderful, remarked the elven mage. Sometimes I just cannot handle being that dirty, as she washed her face and neck. Sister Elaine nodded her head in agreement as she too got cleaned up. As the pair finished, they noticed the waif looking out the window. Has the stable boy let our mounts escape? mused Sister Elaine. Karina shook her head and stated no, pointing out that the watch commander seemed to be loitering around the corral. I don't think she's trying to hide, I think she is just observing from a distance. The other two females moved to the window and saw what the waif did. They discussed the issue but felt that armed adventurers, strangers at that, would likely cause the watch commander some consternation. Sister Lane pointed out that they would speak with the woman later to try and allay any fears the law enforcement of Tunis may have. As the cleric spoke, her arm was grabbed in a firm grip by the mage who exclaimed, Look at that! Clearly giddy, Sister Elaine looked in the general direction that the mage had spied and was also gleeful. The two hopped up and down and were overjoyed at what they saw. Karina was aloof to the hysteria, but the women pointed out that the inn had a secure bathhouse in the back. Karina was less impressed than her two associates were, but feigned interest at the discovery. The mage and cleric went over to the male's room and relayed their find. While Cabe was interested, both Fargus and Bolger were equally unimpressed. Cabe asked how many it would hold, and the women nearly screeched in excitement, and that it appeared to have three bays. Fargus twirled one finger into the air at the hoopla and asked Bolger if he was ready to go find a drink. The former sailor mimicked the women and began to hop on each foot, yelling, Drink! 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 until they were ushered out of the room by the women. The bard offered to stand watch if the three women wanted to partake of a solid cleansing. The response was quick and overwhelming with the half-elf on the receiving end of a trio of kisses. The women went back to their room to garner some personal supplies and subsequently met back up with them outside the stalls. The women entered the stalls after filling up the overhead buckets from a nearby well. Cabe gathered a few more buckets and filled them up in the event the ladies needed more clean water. After nearly 30 minutes of personal grooming, the women exited the stalls with all of the trail dust cleaned off of them. The women offered to stand watch for Cabe, who politely declined, pointing out that he did not feel that he was in any jeopardy. The women accepted his answer and advised that they would keep an eye out from the room. He thanked them and refilled the large tank that fed the three buckets before stepping in and disrobing. As he scrubbed his body clean, he began to whistle a happy tune when he heard a rustling outside the door. Looking to the corner where his belongings were, he reached over and grabbed one of the short swords before flinging open the door to the bath. There, in front of the door, sat a rather unamused Tressa, smoking on a slender pipe. Taking a long drag from the pipe, she blew out several smoke rings into the air before staring back at the naked bard. Do you always greet people in this manner? she posed. Quickly taken aback, Cabe returned into the stall and closed the door. I do when I'm surprised, milady," was his sharp retort. The woman leaned over and smacked her pipe against the tree trunk, clearing it out with some embers falling to the dirt. She returned to the pipe to the back of her belt and bowed. My apologies, half-elf. You are correct. I should have announced myself. Cabe 
bewildered by the apology, was attempting to process the discord when Karina ran out from the front of the building. She had apparently witnessed the commander's approach and was uncertain of her intentions. Cabe quickly waved her off and the waif returned inside. I noticed that your colleagues had returned inside and had left you alone. I just wanted to ensure your safety on your first night in Tunis. At times, some are wary of strangers, especially of half-breeds such as yourself. Ordinarily, the bard would have bristled at the comment, but he detected no insult in her tone. In listening to her, he suddenly realized he couldn't detect any tone, which bothered him a great deal. He took note of her nonchalant behavior and quickly finished up his cleaning as he noticed Tressa approach the door area. If you don't mind, I would prefer to talk to you face to face. She stood just far enough away from the door to allow him some modesty. I just want to make a few things clear for you and your group, she continued. My job is the safety and security of Tunis. Nothing more, nothing less. Strangers can sometimes bring trouble, and recently we received a message passed through the coffer box about a group from Phoenix that may or may not be headed to our area. Your group partially matches that description. However, Geldor is an excellent judge of character, so I will ask you simply. Are you here to cause problems? Cabe stopped washing himself at the startling revelation, and after his hiccup, it did not go unnoticed. The bard quickly dunked the remaining water over his head and began to towel off as he stepped up to the doorway going nose to nose with the guard commander. I give you my word, he stated, on the soul of my mother, that none of us are here to cause problems. The pair locked eyes and a smi slight smile crept onto Tressa's face and she gave the half-elf a nod. Stepping back a few feet, she turned to walk away before looking over her shoulder at Cabe. That's good to hear. I'd hate to have to use my authority against you. Force can be... messy, if you understand my point. The bard smiled wryly, forgetting momentarily about the information he had just gotten. He watched the commander walk away, thinking that she liked him, before the realization of her previous words struck. Message? Phoenix? Crap! He yelled. He gathered his clothes, putting them on quickly as he ran towards the interior of the inn to warn his associates. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.